Hey, Chris, Adrian and I were wondering if we could get a cost of living raise. Ah, uh, there's no room in the budget. Chris, I need something just a little more for like a food budget. I've been eating cat food for the last week. I don't know you had a cat. I don't. Cat food's healthy. Look at how healthy cats are. I, I don't mean to be disrespectful, Chris, but <laughs> it really seems to me like there's no room in the budget. Oh, didn't I tell you? I'm vegan now. Congratulations. Congratulations are necessary, Christopher. It's all about having compassion and empathy for your fellow man. Is cat food vegan? Hey, Nico, there's your phrase. What's up? It's Adrian from ProductionCrate.com. I am so excited. Chris Kelly, what's your favorite movie? Have you ever heard of Scott Pilgrim vs. the World? I have! I've known about it for 10 years. I've been wanting to tackle some effects from it forever. Can we do it today? Can we please do it today? Absolutely. freaking lutely Let's go! We are gonna start with Gideon's Pixel Katana. Whoa. The first thing you might notice about this effect is that it is very similar to a lightsaber. We already know how to do lightsabers. <laughs> you might think that you can just use the video co-pilot saber effect to do this and well almost see the problem here is that lightsabers are perfectly straight whereas katanas have more of a curve so if you're trying to replicate this effect with a different kind of sword the saber plugin might be a good option for you but we're doing it legit so we had to go another way we put the katana on the floor and we took a photo of it we then masked around the blade in after effects this gives us a solid that we know for for a fact is the exact right shape to match our katana blade. Let's just go ahead and use the pan behind tool, shortcut Y, to move the anchor point to the base. And then we'll just need to keyframe the position, 3D rotation, and scale to match up with our footage. Yeah, it's gonna take a little while, but it's not that hard. Once that's done, we can pre-compose it. Control, Shift, C, my creators, moving all of the attributes into the new composition. And now this is gonna flatten out the 3D blade laid back down into a 2D flat layer that we can easily apply effects to, like a ceasing composite and a little bit of glow, for example. Exactly those things, yeah. yeah. Now there's a few different ways you can pixelate something inside of After Effects. CC block load works and it's gonna give you perfect squares, but you're gonna be a little bit limited in what size pixels you can get out of it. Now, of course there's mosaic. That's a classic. It is, but the problem is by default, it gives you tiles that are the same shape is your comp, which is almost never a square, right? And to get them to be square, you're going to have to do some math. Ooh. There, <laughs> <laughs> there are shortcuts, though. For example, we can start with 160 horizontal blocks and 90 vertical ones, and that's going to give us perfect squares in a 16 by 9 comp. If those blocks are too big, you could just multiply both values by 2. If they're too small, divide by 2. You can multiply and divide by any number as long as you do the same operation to both values, they will stay in proportion. My question is, why doesn't the mosaic have like a slider like the, uh, what's that other one? The grid effect. Yeah. You know, you can default that one to perfect squares. Why can't the mosaic do that? Update it. After effects. Let's start a hashtag. We're looking at you. <laughs> hashtag <laughs> update change the mosaic. Change, update, change the, uh, update the change. Update the change. <laughs> after effects. You <laughs> know what we mean. Update the change. I'll know <laughs> what it means. If we're being honest and you really hate math, just make sure your horizontal number 
number is a little less than twice your vertical number and really you should be good to go. Nobody's gonna be up against the screen with a ruler measuring your pixels to make sure they're perfect squares. And if they are, they're probably squares themselves. Our other option for pixelating things is CC ball action, believe it or not. Just keep these scatter at zero and turn the ball size up and that actually turns into a bit more of a pixel effect. Use whichever method you prefer. We're also gonna color this blue and use a screen or an ad transfer mode. Now, this sword is supposed to leave a little bit of a trail that pixelates things behind it as well. So let's duplicate that layer, delete our pixel and color effects, and we'll use an echo effect to make a trail. We're not gonna lie to you, this is gonna suck to render. This is actually a situation where it might be better to use the Saber plugin after all to make this trail. You're still gonna need to echo it, but you're only gonna need one or two echoes as opposed to something like 30. Another thing to keep in mind is that we are gonna be pixelating this, so if your trail has little gaps in it, it's okay. You don't have to make it perfectly smooth because that's just gonna take way longer to render and it's not gonna make the effect better. Mm -hmm. So like I just said, we're gonna apply some pixelization to this using whichever method we choose. And we're gonna make a new adjustment layer using this trail layer as a luma mat. Luma mat. Oh, that's gonna be a new thing. <laughs> On that adjustment layer, we're gonna add a mosaic effect and use our math trick to pixelate the background. We're also going to add a curves and bump up the blue channel and we're going to add some noise as well. We're going to use a posterize effect because that might also be a good way to enhance the 8-bit look. We're also going to want a second trail that's even longer and we're going to make it using the same steps as before. Were you listening? <laughs> but on this one we're going to have smaller pixels and we're going to punch up the blue a little bit less and we don't need the noise or posterization on this copy. Now this sword also sometimes leaves a trail of square particles in its wake. That's easy enough to do with trap code particular just use the sword as a layer emitter and we'll have the velocity either at zero or something very low and let the particles shrink down over time pick a square texture color and blue and experiment with your transfer modes for this one we ended up going with linear dodge it's worth noting that the pixel sword looks a little bit different in pretty much every single shot in the movie so you can pick and choose which of these steps you want to do for your look don't let us boss you around too much please chris i've been eating cat food for like the last week i have no food budget. You have a cat? No. Why would I have a cat? <laughs> <laughs> it was too good. It was too good. Sorry. Okay. In the movie, director Edgar Wright instructed the cast not to blink on camera, even going so far as to redo takes if somebody blinked. With Adrian, aka <laughs> the world's blinkiest VFX artist, uh, true. we would be here all day. <laughs> Gotta get you some eye drops, kid. <laughs> so instead, what we did is just removed his blinks with the content aware fill. Some of you <laughs> laughed when we did this on the Scarlet Witch video, but hey, it works. To make the eyes glow, we just track and roto the eyes with mocha. Here's an interesting tidbit about me. My eyes are asymmetrical because I got hit in the face by a car when I was 13 years old. Jeez. Anyway, we're gonna apply that tracking data to some solids with a circular gradient on them, and we're gonna use the roto masks as an alpha mat. Whoop, whoop. We use some of our sideways fog bursts to accent these. Let's just make a new comp to make the waves of cruelty-free non-dairy energy coming off of my hand. We're gonna start with a radio waves effect. In our case, the frequency is at 0.6 and the expansion is nine and the color is gray. And you're gonna wanna turn the start and the end width up to values that make sense for your shot. For all of these values, you're gonna wanna use ones that make sense for your shot. I usually don't like giving you guys numbers because I don't want you to just copy it because your shot is different than mine. To stylize them, we're gonna add the following effects. <coughs> a solid composite with a black background. A fast box blur turned up to about 20 and we're gonna set the blur dimensions to horizontal. Always make sure to repeat the edge pixels. A fractal noise, scale it up to something that makes sense for your shot and set the blend mode to overlay. <laughs> Optics compensation, check reverse lens distortion and turn it up a bit. Ours is at about 60. Vector blur, turn it up until you start to get some more of that unified shape. And a levels, crush the blacks and the whites until it starts to look solid. All right, here's a tip to add some more variety. Go back to the radio waves effect and cut your frequency in half. Then duplicate your layer, set it to screen and off set it so the waves are back roughly in the right spot. Now change some values in the fractal noise effect and your waves are gonna look a little bit different from one another. Let's pre-compose those two layers together and make a simple chromatic aberration effect. We do that with a shift channels effect. We turn off the green and the blue channels, duplicate that layer and turn the red
red off and the green back on. Duplicate that one one more time and make this one blue. Set them all to add and then either move or scale them slightly to get that colorful fringe on the side. Yeah, or just go download the free script. Oh my God, I forgot about that. Yes. Yeah. Download that free script. Forget everything else I just said. Now we just drop that into our vegan Adrian shot on a screen or an ad mode and blur it appropriately. The lens flare, well, it's just a lens flare. You know how to make lens flares. In the wide shot, Chris is shot on a green screen. That's how we were able to make him float. But as for me, I'm actually right there in the shot. I'm just rotoed out. We created this alternate version of the background by combining two passes where I just held a light really close to the wall. And then we faded that in to make this darkening effect. The lighting change on the characters is faked using a separate copy with a dark fill and a bevel and embossed layer style. It's a little bit janky if you stare at it, but it looks good in the shot. The movie version of the effect is just as janky, guys. You'd actually be impressed by how janky Hollywood effects are if you just take the time to notice. True. The vegan radio waves in the shot are animated by hand just using a circular mask. The cinema bars are from Graphics Gray, which is super useful because we didn't know how we'd be able to create such <laughs> complex shapes if we had to draw these by hand. Graphics crate saving the day again. Perfect. Nico, you're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Are you off there, Nico? All right. If you watched our Cruella tutorial, then you already know how to dissolve someone into coins. It's the same effect, guys. The two halves of me were shot separately. For my top half, I'm actually standing on a turntable to get that spinny, twisty motion. For the bottom half, I'm just acting falling onto the floor. Here's my secret method for acting falling onto the floor. You just fall onto the floor. We created a solid with an animated mask and a rough and edges effect to use as an alpha mat whoop, whoop. to erode me away. We also wrote a sculpt my arm back in to add some extra depth. The coins themselves are made in trap code particular using a spinning coin from footage crate as our texture. We also have a spinning pixel coin available if you want to push that video game aesthetic a little bit further. Listen, fellas, if you want to make money, don't get a job. Go to the bank. The background of this shot is just a combination of a couple of our looping light wall backgrounds. Uh, and this cool pre-made KO animation. In order to keep our crew to a minimum while we're all still getting our vaccines, we needed a way to pick up the slack on set with recording audio. Thankfully, the folks over at Hollyland sent us one of their awesome Lark 150 wireless microphone kits. This kit comes with two transmitters and a single receiver for both devices, all packaged in this swanky charge case. You can record audio with built-in mics on the transmitters themselves, but instead we used the lav mics that came packaged with the kit and the results speak for themselves. We're so proud of those lav mics that we didn't even paint them out. <laughs> yeah, they are there in the shots, but truly we love this kit. It is awesome. Having this kit made recording audio between the three of us super easy. And we're definitely gonna be using this setup in the future. You can find out more about the Lark 150s and other neat features by checking the link in the description below. I mean, seriously, look how cute this box is. It's like, <laughs> love it. One thing that's important to keep in mind when you're looking for a Scott Pilgrim look is that you might want to use some impact frames. These are commonly found in anime and they're usually black and white, sometimes very sketchy and only shown for a tiny fraction of a second, but they really make your hits look more exciting. You don't always register them when you're watching at speed, but if we go through some of these hits frame by frame, you can see exactly what we're talking about. A lot of these are made really easily by just using backgrounds and animations from our anime category. Speaking of anime, we want to turn you into anime characters. Not now, for real, not for real. No. Videos. Videos, that's right. <laughs> we want to take videos and photos of you, the creators, and use our skills as visual effects artists to turn you into anime characters. So if you want to participate in this video, send a photo or a video of you doing some type of cool anime pose to support at productioncrate.com. We're going to select our favorites and make it awesome. I just didn't want them to think it was like an easy evil plot permanently changed them into anime characters. That's next year. Just for one video. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We, we appreciate your patience. Later, creators. I don't Make know what awesome. you did that. Later, <laughs> creators. <laughs>